Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time. We bless your name because you brought us together so you can manifest your power in every life. And we're asking, Lord, that your power will destroy anything that hinders us from following your will in Jesus' name. Amen. That your work in every heart, cleanse every heart, purge every heart, crucify the old Adamic nature and make us steadfast in the way, in the word, in the will of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Confirm your word in our hearts and our lives. Make us transform people, changed people, conquering people. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you. I can sit down. We're coming to this message on conquering power. That's the power to conquer. The reason why the Lord has raised us up as individuals and as ministers and as a church, Deeper Life Bible Church, is to have us return to what Calvary has provided. And one of the central things that Calvary has provided is to make us and give us the power, the power to conquer. And the power to conquer available through the cross and through Calvary and through Jesus Christ is grace following into our lives. That power is available. And I believe as you pay attention to the word of God and receive the word of God, that power will be realized in your life in Jesus' name. The conquering power of crucifixion of self. Looks like many people do not know what they ought to know about Christ, about Calvary, about his conquering power, and turns our lives around about the change of heart we can have, about the journey from Adam unto Calvary and about the journey from Calvary unto this place and so the apostles said for you to have victory for me to have victory for you to have the conquering power and for me to have the conquering power it says knowing this there's something we need to know and I pray that we'll know this not only in the mind we'll know it experientially in Jesus name knowing this that our old man is crucified with him it says as you look at jesus christ on the cross you need to understand it is not just your sin but self the old man it says we need to know this that body of sin now it tells us the reason why it tells us the purpose. It tells us the reason why Christ died on the cross of Calvary. And it says that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. It says self must be crucified. The old man must be crucified. The Adamic nature must be crucified. And when that is done, it's so that the body of sin will be destroyed and then henceforth from that point on from the point of the crucifixion of the old man now in romans chapter 6 verse 6 is told us the work of grace on the cross of calvary now it tells us about the personal experience that paul the apostle himself that he had experienced that he had obtained that he possessed and is transferring that to you and to me is reaching down so that you also will know the possibility is there the experience is there the provision is there it says i am crucified with christ it says nevertheless i live now what does that mean it says it's not my physical life that was crucified with christ but the old adamic nature it says that old man, I, the real personification of sin, he says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave 
himself for me. Many people do not know the difference between sin and self. And many people think if we're saved from sin, that's all. But we need to understand that Lucifer was created without sin. But self brought him down. As we look at Lucifer, we're coming to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. I'm reading here from verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, Lucifer was like created, perfect, holy, righteous, angelic righteousness. But even though there was no sin originally, but there was self. Look at verse 13. I, the self, will ascend into heaven. I, the self, will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I, the self, will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and in the sides of the north. I, the self, will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I, the self, will be like the most high, yet that shall be brought down to hell. Self brought sin. And sin brought the punishment, eternal punishment. If self is not crucified, our spiritual life may still become displeasing unto God. Self led to their fall, and self can still lead to a fall, and the loss of eternal fellowship with God. That's what the Lord is calling us to avoid, to overcome, to conquer the thing that brought Lucifer down and the thing that caused the fall of Adam and Eve, the conquering power of the crucifixion of self. There are three things we're going to concern. Number one, the perverseness and contamination by self perverseness and contamination by self. Self spoils every good thing. Self brings somebody from the mountain top to the deepest valley. Self introduces sin once again. It perverts us. It derails us. It destroys us. Self takes away the crown from the head of man. And then it brings him to be a crawling slave. It contaminates. It spoils. It destroys. It defiles. Makes us dirty in the sight of God. The perverseness and the contamination of self by self. Number two. The purging and the crucifixion of self. That's why Christ came. If Christ was just to forgive us, that's not enough. He needs to tell us so free. He needs to crush the head of the serpent. He needs to crucify that self that brought Adam and Eve into problem. He needs to destroy, take away, crucify, nullify. He needs to put away completely self from us because it's only then where the purging and the crucifixion will have the power, the power to conquer in the public, in the private. Anywhere you find yourself because sin has been forgiven, and self has been crucified, then you're free, truly free, completely free, free and free indeed. Number three, the power 
of concourse over self. The power of concourse over self. Number one, we're looking at the perverseness and the contamination by self. We're coming to Job chapter 9. Job chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 20. Self is perverted. In Job chapter 9, verse 20. If I justify myself, my own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Because of the self that abides within. Because of that self that is still alive. If I were to say I am perfect without self being dealt with and crucified, I'll be found perverse. Isaiah chapter 44, reading from verse 20, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 20. He feedeth on ashes, a deceived heart has turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul nor say is there not a lie in my right hand there are many people that go about rejoicing boasting bragging self-confident i am saved i am saved and i'm beyond every possibility of falling every possibility of being derailed they do not understand that self as long as self abides there that self will pervert them that self will destroy them that self will still bring them down in second corinthians chapter 10 second corinthians chapter 10 reading from verse 12 what many people do is that they compare themselves with other people. What many people do is that they look at the superficial lie. I don't steal. I don't drink. I don't commit this. I don't commit that. They're looking at external things. They're not looking at the depths of the, of the motives and the motivation behind all their actions. Like even sometimes when people do good and they say this is good if you expect very well self can still push them to do that and they have ulterior motive and they may say that you know i've done this good thing and good thing and good thing and if you compare yourself with other people i'm as good as they are other people are being motivated by the glory of God. Other people are being motivated by honor for God. They are motivated. They do the same thing outwardly, externally. They are motivated by self. Look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're looking at verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves was some that commend themselves. We dare not compare ourselves to other people that are bragging, that are boasting, that are flaunting their good deeds, and that are commending themselves and praising themselves, but they, they measure themselves, they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Once they compare with other people and they say, I'm all right. I'm free from sin. I'm born again. I'm saved. Openly, superficially, externally, everything appears to be all right. How about the self within? How do you recognize the self is there? Self produces, number one, self absorption the people who are self-absorbed self-obsessed always thinking about self always pampering self 
always wanting self to be on the throne. They are self-absorbed. Whatever they do, good or bad, whatever they do, right or wrong, whatever they do, it may be up or down. Whatever they do, beneficial, profitable, unprofitable, they do it because they have so much self. Other people, they're still related, they're self-centered. Everything revolves around self. They're always looking for self-advantage and self-propagation and self-honor because they are self-centered and therefore the ways they go or the places they don't go everything is because of me because of me because of me if they do good it's because they want to reap something immediately out of that good if they do bad it's because they want to achieve a goal by that bad thing they do self-centered the people who are self-interested and the self-interest will mean that they are only interested about things that will bring gain unto them, profit unto them. Although they are not committing adultery or fornication, they are not smoking, they are not stealing. But all the same, everything is centered on self. Everything is about self-interest. I'm interested in this, I'm interested in this. Whatever is happening is a consideration of self. There are other people that are self-preoccupied. Self-preoccupied. Although you will not catch them doing something externally wrong, but the motive within and the heart that, that makes them to do what they do, they are preoccupied or self. They are always thinking about, what am I going to have? What am I going to receive? Anything that is happening, it is not the good of the other fellow. It is not the glory of God. It is not simply, naturally, obedience to the Lord. It is self, self-preoccupied. Because of that, they are self-seeking. Self-seeking. They are seeking for the advantage in the house of God. Seeking for the advantage. Maybe somebody is better at doing something. They shield that person away. Maybe somebody is more profitable to the kingdom of God than themselves. If they can, they cover up that person. Maybe somebody will do better, will do something greater than they are doing. They want to so project themselves because they are self-seeking, they are self-serving. You see the people, uh, there are many people that sweat and serve. They labor and sweat. And they go here, they go here, they run here, they run everywhere. And all they're looking for is just the exaltation of self. And that's the reason why self perverts everything, colors everything, diverts everything, defiles everything, corrupts everything. You know? And it has its contamination. The people who have self-admiration, they look at the mirror almost a hundred times a day. It's come into their brain, into their mind. Just they look at their face. They saw that face in the morning, they look at that face again. Or other people, it's not looking at their faces, it's looking at the work they have done. See what I've done, they never stop talking about it. See what I've done, they never stop thinking about it. See what I've done, they never stop recommending themselves to other people. See how good I am. Self-admiration, self-glory, the glory in self. You see, it is not just that, you know, adultery, fornication, stealing, lying, and this and that. The things the people do that give them self-satisfaction. Self-satisfaction. Everything about self. Now I'm all right, I'm satisfied. If they propress somebody and that person is totally crushed and now the person is, you know, lying on the ground and begging and pleading, please, 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 it's enough. I feel the pain already. Then they are happy inside them. Like when those uh, brothers, when they sold Joseph into Egypt, now they can sit down and eat self-satisfaction, self-conceit. 
the people that are proud self-conceit and even when you can see their fault you can see their flaw you can see their error you can see that they've gone astray but they're so full of self-conceit they cannot see for them and to them they're always good everything is always all right and then uh, self-assertion if you are if you challenge them my friend this is wrong they will do everything they'll bring every logic out of the book to assert themselves to protect themselves they can never say I was wrong I'm sorry I didn't do right I had a bad intention I had a wrong motive I went astray forgive me if they ever say forgive me if self is there it will be like Saul forgive me I have seen but come on Samuel lift me up honor me before the people remember my position remember who I am and honor me in the sight of the people the people that have self-confidence watch and pray lest you fall into temptation though all men deny thee I will not and he knew Jesus Christ the Son of God he knew Jesus Christ that whenever Jesus said anything he meant what he said before the cock crow thou shalt deny me no never I cannot deny you I will not deny you I will die for you and with you that is self-confidence you know there are people like that all they, are, they don't understand the depths of the Christian faith they do not understand the demands of God that we should be pure in the inward man that self should have been dealt with that self should get out of the throne the people that have self-flattery they know that thing is not right they'll flatter themselves until you will have to accept you don't believe what he's saying but he keeps on talking flattering himself flattering himself and he will not allow you to raise he's looking at you don't are you not convinced i am who i say i am are you not convinced i got there i got there i did this i did that and if they see any doubt in you they keep on flattering 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 themselves until so you can rest you nod your head and say now they have satisfaction because they passed it on self flattery have you heard of self gratification self gratification that all they want to do is to gratify self and to sow anything that will bring some good feeling onto self and they're always about you know this self indulgence there's some people you cannot put in a team if you put them in a team they want to run the show they're self-opinionated their idea is always the best the way they do something is always the best and the performance they show is always the best they are self-opinionated and they're self-sufficient they don't need you they don't need me they don't need anybody else because they're self-sufficient that's what the lord is telling us about he says as long as self is there it spoils your whole life it destroys your whole life and you will defend the self-defense if anybody tries to bring you to reason and brings you to repentance and brings you to recognition that this is wrong and you need to make your way right you will do everything to assert your innocence and you will do everything to affirm self-affirmation that you're all right about self-will 
self-will. That we know that there is in the way, but just to make self strong and for self to keep its place, self must assert its will, self-righteousness. How about that? That we're better than other people. We're more spiritual than other people. We're more righteous than other people. We're holier than other people. Meanwhile, your conscience is telling you how rotten you are. Your conscience is telling you how dirty you are. Your conscience is telling you how deceptive you are. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Here we're reading from verse 5. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 5. Which says, stand by thyself come not near to me for I am holier than thou the people that carry this air of superiority more spiritual than everybody else more righteous than everybody else they are the number one in any society in any congregation they are the number one in the midst of other people. If anybody gives testimony, if anybody says this, this, or that, they'll find a way to come around to say, we've had a lot today. But you know, I met the Lord at such and such a time, and you will think the man is giving testimony. He just wants you to understand that whatever you have heard from other people, I am better than they are. I am more righteous than they are. I am holier than them all. I am more devoted and more sacrificial and more submissive than all of them. I am holier than thou. Look at this. These are a smoke in my nose and a fire that burns all the day. That's what the Lord is telling us that self has to be dealt with. Because that self will contaminate every other good thing in your life. That self will destroy and defile every other good thing in your life. That self has to be brought down. And I pray the Lord will do it today in Jesus' name. Are you there? You've gone back home. The Lord will do it in our hearts in Jesus' name. But you know, if it's going to be done, the tree must be cut down. I want you to understand this. Look at your life like a tree. The tree has root. The tree has stem. The tree has branches. The tree has fruits. And if the fruit is bad, if the branches are not all right, you want to clear the place so you cut down the tree. That's like salvation. Our lives are being spoiled by all those external things that we did. We were unrighteous, we were thieves, we were covetous, we were fighters, we were violent people, we were drunkards, we were smokers, fornicators, and adulterers. But now we came to Christ and he cut down the tree. All the sins are taken away. All the sins are forgiven. The sin is cleansed off, is blotted out. And the place is clear that we can say all those fruits are gone. All those branches are gone. But the root self is still there. The root the Adamic nature is still there. The root, the one that brought every other sin before, is still there. It's not enough to cut down the tree. We must uproot that tree. Job chapter 14. In Job chapter 14 verse 7. Job chapter 14 verse 7. For there is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch 
thereof will not cease though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stalk thereof die in the ground yet through the scent of water it will budge and bring forth boughs like a plant it's telling us that we need to approach that tree uproot that cell and then feel the vacancy feel the empty space that the plant or the fruit or the root has left feel that with the spirit and the power of the spirit point number two now the purging and the crucifixion of self was saved we're born again the tree has been cut down the branches have been taken away the fruit evil fruit of sinning that has been forgiven taken out of the way now we need to deal with the root the purging and the crucifixion of self psalm 51 in psalm 51 we're reading from verse 7. Look at it from verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts. What does that mean? In application, as it's applied to David. Look up here. David should have gone to the battlefield. But this period is Saint Joab. He sent the army. Go fight the battle of the Lord. Now Joab was not the one called by God to fight the Philistines. Yes, Joab had his place. Joab was useful. Joab was significant. But the call was a call to David. He was to fight the Philistines. He was to fight the army of the enemy. But he said, you go and do it. And then he remained back at home. As he was back at home, he was walking around his veranda. And then saw a woman. So far, so good. No sin yet. No evil done yet. And then, after seeing the woman, here comes the real offense. He began to think about that. He began to meditate about what he saw. He began to paint a picture of what he saw. It lodged in his mind, in his thoughts, in his heart, in his inward man, inner man sin was not lodged there the sin is not committed yet but in the inward parts there's no more purity no more righteousness and eventually it's just a matter of time that thing that is planted in the heart that thing that lodges in the inward man that sin that is now pervading and controlling and stimulating the inner recesses of the man. It's just a matter of time. It will come into the open. That's why as he was now repenting, he said, Lord, I understand. Now I know. It's not just when I sent for the woman. It's not just when I touched the woman. It's not just when I committed sin with the woman. It's not just when I sent Orias the Osman to the battlefront to be killed that I committed sin. From the time that thing was inside my heart, something went wrong. Behold, the desire is truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts where self begins oppression. In the hidden part where sin, where self begins the contamination 
That's what to deal with. Shall that make me to know wisdom? If I had been wise, when that thing was inside me, infiltrating, invading, and influencing me, that's the time I should have dealt with that thing. Touch me with Esau. Now I've blown it. The self, the sin. There's the old man, there's iniquity. There's transgression, there's trespass. Everything has now come back. Touch me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be white and snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice you know what he's saying and nobody could detect this not yourself not yourself the bones that were broken the man was being eaten up by self internally the the pain was there the guilt was there the condemnation was there and david just carried on. He had, he had trained himself to the point he could have external activities. And he, he had trained himself. The people, they have trained themselves. If they need to laugh, they laugh. They have trained themselves. If they need to do any work, although the inside is being eaten up, although they know there's confusion and conviction within, although they know there's condemnation inside them, they can continue their work. They can do this and do this. And they can do it with precision. And they can do it to perfection outwardly. And yet the bones have been broken on the outside. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. You see that? I need something to be done internally, inwardly. Create in me. A clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Only he knew he had, he had lost the joy. The joy and the excitement of serving the Lord. The joy and the assurance of a home in eternity. By and by, he had lost all that. Only he knew he was still able to manage himself, comport himself. You can do that by training to your destruction. And still do you what everybody thinks you ought to be doing. And still say, stay alive and stay active and stay your, your good self. The people knew of you. And yet you know that something is wrong on the inside. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me of thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. If anybody could have called on David to come and teach about repentance, he could. That's in the hedge. Anybody could have called David to come and teach about pleasing God. He knew that's in the head. But now he said, something is happening on the inside. And because of that inward confusion, I need purging. I need all that to be crucified. I need that to be taken away before I can continue any other thing. And when that is done, and the joy comes back, and the peace comes back, and the assurance comes back, and in the inner man, in my inward parts, in my heart, I know that there is purging, and then there is a creation of a new heart. Then... Will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 6 and verse 7. Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Knowing this, how do we know that? We know that, there are many ways we know something. We, know, we may know salvation by some verses of the Bible. We may know salvation by the preaching that the people give. And we can tell, recite, make known, discuss with other people, points one, two, three, and four. Knowing. 
but we may now know by personal experience knowing this that we have visited calvary and we're sincere with ourselves we have visited the cross and we're sincere with ourselves i know that self must be dealt with self is like heavy load i cannot keep on carrying this heavy load inside my heart and this uh, man, this, this inner man, the self, that's always pushing me, pushing me, pushing me to do this and that. Even pushing you to do good so you can cover up. Pushing you to be an achiever so that the kind of activity of achievement will make you forget about heaven. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Knowing this, that you've been saved, you knew you were saved. And then it comes to the point, I see the activities of cell. I see the propensities of cell. I see the influence of cell. I acknowledge the power of cell. I, I see the association, the companionship of cell. I see that it follows me everywhere. I must take self to Calvary. Knowing this, it comes a time in your life, in your Christian experience, that you know, that you know, that you know that self is now crucified. How do you know? The self-confrontation for the first time in your life, you are now able to confront self and say, you can't do that again. Self, you'll not push me to that again. Self, you'll not get that out of me again. Self, you will not make me say that again. Self confrontation. Self analysis. That you say, okay, let me hear what you're saying. Self, you're talking to your inner man. Are you saying? I analyze that. Is that for the glory of God? Self-analysis. Is that for the good of the people? Self-analysis. Is that the old story? You want to get me back to that scene again? Self-analysis. The self-examination. Self-examination. Deliberately. It's like you're searching your house. Any rat hiding there? Any cockroach hiding there? Any dirty scene hiding there? Self-examination. In the past, you were afraid to examine yourself. Uh, I don't want to think about anything that will make me feel guilty. I don't want to examine anything that will make me feel all right. Just, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm all right. You are afraid of self-examination. But now, there is self-examination, self-confrontation. You're not afraid to confront that self again. Self-analysis. You're not afraid to analyze those activities of self again. You're not afraid to examine. Examine self. Self-examination. The self-reflection. Now, you sit down by yourself. You're not just activity, activity, activity. Now that you have been purged, now that you have been crucified, now that the old Adamic nature is dealt with, you sit down, you reflect, and you think back, and you think through that good thing I did, what motivated me, looking for praise of men, or looking for the praise of God. That good thing that I gave, what influenced me, looking for appreciation or just obeying the commandment of god that place that i went what was i looking for was i looking for satisfaction pleasure or was i in obedience to the word of god running errands for god now there is self-reflection now there's self-denial self-denial do this you don't jump up immediately. You sit back. No, I can't do that. It will give me pleasure. I can't do it. It will give me gain. I can't do it. 
because now I am centered only on the glory of God. Self-discipline now. You don't have to wait for anybody's discipline now because self has been dealt with and now there can be self-discipline. When to stand up, when to sit down, when to shut your mouth, when to speak out, when to be courageous, when to have backbone, when to have conviction, when to demonstrate conviction. Now, the self-discipline, the self-sacrifice, self-sacrifice. Now, you're not looking for the easy way out. That's the way, the narrow way, I will take the way. That's the path of righteousness. It's going to be challenging. I'm up to it because now the self sacrifice. There is self forgetfulness. You used to think about myself, 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 my name, my name, my glory, my height, my honor, my privilege, my position. Now you've forgotten all that. The self forgetfulness because self has now been dealt with. There's also self report. Self report. You go back to God every time. Lord, look at this. You open all the pages of your life. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. God knows already self-report and if you find that you're given some kind of privilege and assignment and you see that looks like if I touch that thing I will pollute the ministry looks like if I go that way I will destroy the good work of Calvary self-report you say no I cannot do that why self-scrutiny self-scrutiny you're not the one excusing yourself excusing your action when you condemn the same thing in the lives of other people all that self-importance is gone if I'm not there everything will collapse you think so if I don't offer that all the other offerings will be useless worthless you think so self-importance all that is now gone that's why it says knowing this experientially that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin but seven for he that is dead is freed from sin. There's purging, there's crucifixion. We're looking at Galatians again, chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. We're reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Have you noticed um, sometimes when people comment about an individual that individual might be new to you but there's somebody else who knew that individual before he was born again before she was born again and knew the peculiarities and knew the characteristics and knew the normal ways that he or she will act or do anything and now you're just seeing the fellow maybe for the first year in your life. You've never met him before. You've never met her before. And then she does something in a particular way, good or bad. Acceptable or not acceptable. Profitable or profitable. He does a particular thing. Or maybe he looks for an advantage for himself or herself. And then you are surprised. You are taken aback. And then somebody who knew that fellow before he or she was born again will say, I've known him for a long time. I've known her for a long time. 
that's just him that's just her and there's nothing strange 30 years ago 40 years ago i knew him i knew her that is him he had not experienced at this galatians chapter 2 verse 20 and you are surprised how can he act like this how can she act like this we need to come to calvary like paul the apostle came to calvary and he said i'm saved thank god i've gone beyond that i'm born again thank god i received mercy because i did those things ignorantly in unbelief but thank god i've gone beyond that now i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me self came out self was drawn away self was conquered self was taken out and christ came in place of that cell and he says i'm crucified and the crucified old man is taken away and now christ sits on the throne christ is present go beyond that christ is prominent go beyond that christ is preeminent now in me christ liveth in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me through purging and crucifixion of self god's greater grace now produces a new life a new thought life a new devotional life a new submissive life a new god glorifying life a new christ honoring life that is now done in the heart because self is gotten rid of by looking at john chapter 12 john chapter 12 verse 24 verily verily i say unto you except a wheat a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit unless self falls into the ground and die that you are no more self absorbed no more self-centered no more self interested no more self occupied no more self seeking no more self admiring no more self satisfaction no more self conceit no more self assertion no more self applause no more self confidence no more self enrichment no more self flattery no more self gratification no more self indulgence no more self opinionated except all that attains and accrues to self will fall down and die you'll be a lone ranger people can recognize that you might cover it off for some time but those who look very well they can see that's just self that's just self that's what he always does he wants everything to turn his own way self-will that's him that's her self-righteousness is trying to paint something white well no it's black it's trying to say nothing is well know how, how it is self-importance is come again it's there he just feels that he is the one his aura his aroma his saint must fill the whole house we know that's what he's always doing self-propelling except all that falls into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit he that loveth his life shall lose it and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal if any man serve me 
let him follow me and where I am there shall also my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor in second Timothy chapter 2 second Timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 21 if a man therefore purge himself from this have you noticed how people come to retreats and when they came in this is how they were and it goes through the water that you cleanse it goes through the bathroom where we shall wash and be clean it goes through this place where the sponge of the world shall scrub every part of their lives and they go through all the sessions that we go through and they come out the other side still the same at the beginning proud at the end proud at the beginning self-willed at the end self-willed at the beginning self-projecting at the end self-projecting at the beginning self-gratifying at the end self-gratifying have you noticed how people still continue that same way because the preaching does not purge. The preaching only shows you how to be purged. The preaching does not crucify self. The preaching only shows you how self will be crucified. The preaching doesn't set you free. It's your response, your reaction, your repentance, your receiving and you're plunging into what is preached that makes you totally purged and cleansed if a man therefore purge himself from these it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work first corinthians chapter 9 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. But I keep under my body. Luke, always where Paul couldn't do it for him. Timothy and Titus, always with Paul could not do it for him. I keep under my body. Nobody will keep that cell under for you. You have to do it yourself. That pride, you have to do it yourself. That self arrogance. More beautiful, more handsome than them all. Nobody can keep that away from you. You have to do it yourself. I'm better than them all, holier than them all. If I'm not there, nothing will be done. Nobody can keep that under for you. You have to do it yourself. I'm so important, Nathan should not come and talk to me. I am David. Nobody can take that away from you. You have to do it yourself. I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection. It's one thing to bring, to keep under your body and to keep it under until you bring it to subjection and to make it your full-time job and to say, I will not do any other thing. Self, you will not compete with the glory of God in my life. Self, you will not destroy me. Self, you will not drag me down to hell. Self, I put you under. And I'm going to put you under until I see the evidence that you're put into subjection. You do it yourself. You understand? Self will keep you away from heaven. 
You say you are saved? Maybe. You say your sins are forgiven? Thank God. You say I visited Calvary? I'm redeemed? Thank God. But self that brought Lucifer away from heaven. Self that drove Adam and Eve away from the Garden of Eden can take heaven away from you until you say today I make up my mind and I keep my body under all that self liberation, self liberty jumping here and there I can do anything, I can say anything I can touch anything, I can do anything all that must go I keep my body under and bring ye to subjection, lest that by any means, when I appeal to others, I myself should be cast away. I pray God will make us wise. Wise people, I say God will make us wiser. Because if we're not wise, activities will be the order of the they expect me to do it must rise up and do it there's something burning inside your heart there's guilt there's condemnation and there is that rottenness that contamination and there's that evil there's a pulling down I must do it, I must rise up and go and do it why don't you stop why don't you have self-examination self-reflection self-analysis and say I will not go on and then find that I'm plunged into eternity without being ready without being holy in the heart holy in the mind holy through and through and then you settle with the Lord and as you settle it will cleanse you it will purge you he crucify and destroy that old Adamic nature. You will be free. Somebody there said you will be free. Point number three, the power of concourse over self. The power of concourse over self. Philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 10 Philippians chapter 3 from verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection what's that? the mighty spirit of God mighty and powerful enough to roll away that heavy stone. The women were coming to the sepulchre and they were wondering, we don't have enough natural strength to roll away the stone. Who shall roll the stone away for us? You don't have enough natural power to roll away the stone or cell. But as you come, to Calvary and you're wondering how will this be rolled away that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death that that old man Adamic nature will totally completely die the power as we talk about the power, let me help you for the sake of remembrance. P, the pattern of his absolute surrender. P, what gives us power? Might, spiritual energy. And we drop cell and walk away free. And the self does not have the power of attachment to us to pull us down again P, the pattern of absolute surrender we're looking at Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 
Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but though equal with the Father but though from all eternity the same as the Father but made himself of no reputation no more seeking human honor human praise human appreciation no more utter self-gratification self-flattery self-honor made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant he took that voluntarily i must see him that serveth. I want to serve. I don't want to dictate. I don't, to, I don't want to lord it over other people. I'm not looking for cheap recognition. But he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. The pattern of his absolute surrender. The voluntarily by yourself for the sake of heaven voluntarily by yourself to avoid the danger and the destruction of the proud he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross oh is the obedience of an approved soldier the obedience of an approved soldier a soldier of the cross a soldier of Christ and you understand obedience is the number one thing in my life not obedience to man obedience to the father obedience to the captain of your salvation obedience to the promptings of the spirit obedience to the teaching of scripture you know that that's the number one thing in my life men praise thee or blame thee what is that to thee here is the word of god their comments their criticisms their commendation their condemnation matter not to you the only thing that matters is what does my captain ordain? What has my captain said? The obedience of an approved soldier. Second Timothy chapter 2. Verse 3. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Now therefore, in your hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, obedience sometimes will bring hardship. Obedience will bring persecution. Obedience will bring opposition. Obedience will make people sometimes rob you the other way around. Obedience will sometimes make some people to disregard you. And look at you, come on. And look at you as if you are nobody. Obedience sometimes will make people to say, Who is he? Who is she? What does he think about himself? What does he think? She think about herself. Obedience will bring hardship sometimes. But you know who has called you. You know who has appointed you. And you know the obedience of an approved soldier. Thou therefore. self destroyed. Thou therefore. Your aim is to glorify God and glorify God alone. Now thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life but that he may please him not please them that he may please him in the corner of your house that he may please him in the office where you're working that he may please him if you're going to please the Lord in your home in the church in the office in your community in your society, in your village, in your town, among your colleagues, and among your neighbors, you will displease a lot of people. 
You cannot please the Lord without displeasing the people who are not on the Lord's side. W is the willingness of entire sanctification. The willingness of entire sanctification. When you're sanctified, it brings a willingness into you. I'll go where he wants. I'll do what he desires. I'll obey what he commands. I'm willing not only to do it to this point, but to do it to the point of death. You are dead to human desires. You are dead to human appreciation. You are dead to all the things they say and all the things they do. The pain of the pleasure. The drawing of the driving. The pushing or the pulling in whatever direction. When you are sanctified, you are dead to all of them. And now you are willing to follow the Lord wherever, whichever direction he may lead. We're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. No problem now, you're willing. When self was there, you argue. Why is it evil? Why does it appear to be evil? What's wrong in it? Others are doing it. Others have done it. I even know men of God who are doing it. I know great, great women of God who are doing it like that. I know many people who are going that direction. Even in this, our church, I know people who are going that direction. What's wrong in it? Self knows how to argue. Self knows how to win an argument. But self does not know the way to heaven. When self is dealt with, when self is crucified, you'll be willing to abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithfully see that call it you who also will do it. E, the emblem of acknowledged servanthood. The emblem of acknowledged servanthood. You acknowledge you are a servant. A servant cannot have his way. A servant in mage cannot have her way. A servant cannot impose his will on the master. A servant will not impose her will on the Lord, on the master. A servant will not arrogate to himself, to herself, the right to do this or to do that. The master dictates that. A servant of the Lord is not an activist. Activist in society. Activist in the kingdom. Carrying placards. We will not have this man to reign over us. Servants don't do that. We will not believe this or accept this. This is what we're going to do. Those are human rights activists. The Church of Christ doesn't have activists. Those are strangers that came into the church. It's Judas Iscariot hiding himself in the midst of the disciples. It's Ananias and Sapphira trying to look like the rest of us. It's Simon the sorcerer. Your heart is not right with God. You are the gall of bitterness in the pool of iniquity. Although strangers, activists, they're not children of God. They're not part of us. Just they're there like Judas was there. If you are saved and sanctified 
and the Adamic nature had been dealt with, and that self has been crucified, you carry the emblem of acknowledged servanthood. In Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 7. Luke chapter 17, verse 7. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, when he's come from the field, go and sit down to meal. I will not rather say to him unto the servant, make ready wherewith I may serve. And gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken. And afterward, thou shalt eat and drink. Does he thank the servant? Does he bend the knee before the servant? Does he cringe before the servant? Does he bow to the servant? Does he seek the approval of the servant? Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I throw not, not really. So likewise ye, when ye have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Power, P, the pattern of his absolute surrender. O, the obedience of an approved soldier. W, the willingness of entire sanctification. E, the emblem of acknowledged servanthood. R, is the reproduction of his acceptable sacrifice. The reproduction, the power to follow Christ and to reproduce the acceptable sacrifice of Christ. Because now self is out of the way. Romans chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 12 reading from verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Lord will do it for us. He will cleanse us. He will purge us. He will purify us. He will sanctify us. He'll crush and crucify that Adamic nature and he will make us have the power, the power to live a conquering life. Romans chapter 6 verse 6, knowing this, you'll know it. I said you will know it. That the old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we shall not have sin. We're going to get to Calvary now spiritually, and we're going to call upon the name of the Lord. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer.